Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm John. And this is our 2004 Land Rover Discovery Gamera, and you're watching Answered. Well, we used to have an FJ40 Land Cruiser that we unfortunately no longer own, and we always wanted a replacement that would allow us to get kind of wherever we wanted to go, away from the general public. Yeah, that we can go camping, you know, obviously go off-roading, sort of away from the city. We both have sort of smaller, sportier daily drivers, so we thought it'd be kind of cool to get something. Yeah. Yeah. Initially, I was looking at Defenders, Land Rover Defenders, and also the earlier generation of the Discovery. This one really appealed to me, though. Cosmetically, I liked it, and it also had more creature comforts than either of those. Yeah. So my favorite thing about Gamera is just uh, having the freedom to get anywhere and feel like I'm not gonna get stuck. No matter where I go, I'm confident I can get there and then get back out. And I think my favorite thing about Gamera is just that, you know, in my little car, I always feel really bullied when I'm driving around. <laughs> it's probably in my head, but in Gamera, I feel like I can run people over, even though I don't but it just, I feel protected. <laughs> I swear I don't know. I feel protected and I feel like I could drive over curves and do all sorts of crazy stuff, so, yeah. For me, that's pretty simple. It's a bit on the temperamental side, especially when I first got it. It had a massive amount of repairs that needed to be done. And it's, it's notorious for that, I soon found out. It gives a lot of uh, engine codes, a lot of dash lights at random, and <laughs> sensors and things are always failing. Oxygen sensors, wheel sensors, cam sensors, I've replaced them all. And I think my least favorite thing is just, I love its size, but sometimes practically speaking, you know, I have to remember not to go into certain garages and parallel parking is impossible so I have to go around the block thousands of times to find a giant <laughs> space because <laughs> I just don't want to do it yeah so I think that's my least favorite thing that's a good one yeah okay so now we're gonna go through some of the modifications we did we'll just try to stick with the major ones at least the front bumper is a, a custom made front bumper that has a brush guard and also really high clearance so uh, we don't scrape on anything it also has a, a mount for a, a winch so that when we go out in the middle of nowhere, we can hopefully get ourselves out or we can be good citizens and help other people get out if they get stuck. Depends on what they're driving. Okay. Jeep owners, I don't know. They made a mistake buying that car already, so they're All on right. their own. That was her, not me. We also have grill guards on the headlights, on the hood, I put uh, louvered panels to try to keep the underhood temperature cool. Didn't really do much other than cosmetics. These guys here, I get asked that about probably more than anything else, and that's these cables. The most common guess is usually you want to keep your rack on your roof, but no, this <laughs> is actually a, a limb riser. So if you drive through heavy brush and you have a heavy tree branch come down like this, it won't smash your window. This will lift it up to the side. The snorkel here is basically a raised intake so that if we go through water, even hood depth, yeah. it won't go into the engine and destroy the engine. Yeah. And we have gone through quite a few river crossings, so not quite anything that submerged the engine, but... Close. Yeah. Close. All right, and then... Uh, you can see the, the large 35-inch tires, which uh, we've raised the suspension about six inches to make clearance for the tires. The frame underneath there has uh, actually been removed from the vehicle and galvanized to uh, make it more rust uh, preventative. Uh, the, these do have a tendency to rust, not so much in California, but on the East Coast. On the side here, this step right here is actually a rock it's called a rock slider so that again if you there's a big rock between your tires it will hit this rather than crush the bodywork on your car um, 
we have installed grating on all the windows in the back here so that we can either, number one, pack a bunch of gear up without breaking a window, yeah. or have a dog in the back and have the window rolled down but not worry about the dog jumping out. Yeah. You'll also see a bunch of lighting on the side of the rack. And the reason that's there is so when we get to a campsite in the middle of the night and there's literally no light, we'll have 360 degrees of light around the, the yeah, truck. That's come in really handy. The big lights in the front are for driving. Those are big spot and flood lights that you know give us a lot of illumination down the road ahead of us. Around the back here, if you take a look, we've installed a, a drawer storage system right here that has all the tools and gear in along with these two bins back here. We also have a, a fridge and a, a backup battery power supply. What's special about this fridge is you can see there's really no way to get into it and it's kind of cumbersome. So it's got this tilt slide so you can get in here, load, unload, and then you don't have to lift however much this weighs when it's full. You just do that and then it latches in place. Okay, and then, let's see. The rear bumper here is similar to the front, kind of a custom job that has a lot of ground clearance. And then uh, I modified it to have its own hinged tire mount so I can put a full-size spare and not uh, destroy the door, which was already starting to show signs of damage. The ladder up to our tent, uh, it telescopes down and we store it in the back. Uh, we went with a hard shell rooftop tent uh, mainly for uh, durability. I also prefer the cosmetics of it, but yeah. uh, the hard versus the soft is, those are typically more expensive than the soft, but they're also kind of more uh, durable. And I think it's more weatherproof, rainproof. We also have uh, traction boards stored up here so that if we happen to get stuck somewhere and one of the tires is spinning, we would take one of those and jam it under the tire that would give us a, a surface to get traction on. This is a anchor for the winch so that if we're somewhere where there's nothing to tie onto like a tree or a rock, that actually deploys and buries itself in the ground so that we have a, a winching point to pull us out. We got the shovel, the ax, we got water and gas. Uh, really bad gas mileage. Really bad gas mileage <laughs> is definitely true. We have an awning which folds out, so we have a nice shady spot by the truck here. We have a high lift jack, so that again, if we're stuck somewhere, we can jack up even if we're in a really awkward place. The car also has an onboard air compressor and air locking differentials, so we have true four wheel drive if we need it to go with uh, Land Rover's center locking differential. So I guess that covers most of the, the major features of the truck. We got a, a lot of other little things going on, but that's, that's about it. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, I don't think so. I think you covered pretty much everything. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm the guy who made this video and all the other videos here on Should I Get It Reviews. If you liked hearing John and Vivian's story and learning about their Land Rover Discovery, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more car stories from real car owners. Huge thanks to John and Vivian for showing me around their overlanding rig, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.